So how do you define networking? So the good, the bad, the ugly, feel free to call some things out. Just any words that come to mind. Any feelings, connection, okay. Any other words? Production? Introductions, Introductions yes. Necessary evil. Necessary evil, yes, okay. <laughs> we will get another, just one more. Shallow. Shallow, all right, that's fair. So yeah. Networking can have a bad rap for, let's say, you know, the person who has the business cards stuffed in their pockets and they don't want to hear anything about you. They just want to pass out their cards and get a job from you, right? Uh, well, let's redefine it. So how networking is actually defined is as a supportive system of sharing information and services among individuals and groups having a common interest. So what that means is basically you're helping people. You're making some new friends and you're helping people. All right, and there are some networking falsities that we will debunk. So that includes that you have to be interesting. Who else has heard? You have to talk to as many people as possible to make the event worth it. You have to be alive to the party. You have to go to all the events. So the first one, you have to be interesting, right? So hike Machu Picchu, do all the interesting things and tell people about it, and then, like, then you can go to the event, right? Not quite. A better way to approach networking is to be interested. So asking lots of open-ended questions and let just, you know, you have two ears, one mouth, we've all heard that for a reason. And then another networking policy is that you have to talk to as many people as possible. You know, just those really quick introductions where you get name, business card, maybe you can connect on LinkedIn, on to the next. What if we reframed that as making one new friend? So going deep versus wide. Another one is you have to be the life of the party. Very Kesha, like, hey, all eyes on me, hey. What if you aim to match or slightly elevate the energy of the group? So who saw the Brene Brown special? Who wants to see it and hasn't yet seen it? Okay, by the way, it's amazing. This is actually, <laughs> she's wearing this exact thing. This is from the special. And yeah, so people who've seen the special know this, but she actually identifies as being more introverted. There are lots of, um, lots of celebrities that identify as this, even though they're able to get up on a stage and perform, uh, but they just get their energy from elsewhere. So there's Beyonce, Brene Brown, um, Christina Aguilera, um, Lisa Kudrow, Chris Rock, and, and several others. And so another one, a falsity, is that you have to go to all of the events, right? I mean, kind of like what I did, going to more than 100 per year for the past few years. Um, but instead of doing that, to really maximize your time at these events, finding out what interests you can be really great, right? So it doesn't even have to be something that you're well-versed in, or it could be something that you're curious about. So I remember I was working in natural food several years ago in marketing, and I was wondering about user research. I was like, what's that? I had no idea. I just started going to events and meeting people in the space, and within a few months, I got a job and tried that out. And now I'm in market research, so it's a little different, but a little more in person. Um, so yeah, you never know what will come from exploring your interests through events. Even if you know nothing, you can learn, and a lot of people like to mentor or relay information to people that know next to nothing about what they know everything about. Another is to have a solitude sandwich. So yeah, an example of this, to, to exemplify it, um, after one of my workshops, someone, someone came up to me and was like, hey, Stephanie, so I enjoyed your workshop, but I have a question for you. Why were you giving a presentation on introversion when you are so obviously extroverted? And I, <laughs> I followed up with that with, well, okay, what do you think I was doing before I gave this presentation? He was like, uh, I don't know, were you networking? I'm like, nah, -uh. I was reading my book. <laughs> you may have seen me, I was literally doing that today too, I was reading my book. And then I asked, well, what do you think I'll do after this? And he's like, I don't know, like, go to dinner with friends? I'm like, no. I'm not. <laughs> After this, I'm, you know, I'm gonna say some hellos in networking, because I do like networking, but then I'm gonna hit the wall <laughs> and uh, go home and meditate and sleep. So yeah, this idea of a solitude sandwich is the solitude is the bread. I know that's not typical of a sandwich name, but here we go. Uh, yeah, so it's, that's how we can kind of make the most out of our experiences as introverts by making that solitude sandwich count. And now we'll go over just a few tips, event prep from the inside out. So first is style. Uh, so thinking of style as uh, 
something that you can put on that makes you feel empowered or emboldened in, in some way. So I remember um, a few years ago, I came across a pair of pink glasses. And I was thinking, huh, that won't go with a lot. Should I get those? And I was like, yes, get them. And then it became a thing that people at events knew me for. I, was, I would wear these pink glasses. And I'm like, you know what, why not? Let's wear some pink lipstick, a pink dress. Let's be the pink lady. And, and from there, yeah, it, it becomes something that's memorable and something that builds confidence. Another tip is to meditate. So who here has meditated before? Yay. OK, lots of meditators. That's awesome. So if you haven't yet meditated, um, totally fine. Well, here's an intro to meditation. Feel free to close your eyes for a moment. Take a deep breath into your belly, into your back for one, two, three. Four, hold at the top, and exhale through your mouth. So that's just a brief introduction. And you can do meditation on the go. It's called mindfulness meditation. So if you can't justify sitting down, lighting a candle, and thinking of nothing for 20 minutes, then the next best thing would be, let's say, um, when you're walking off of Muni or Bart, just feel free to not listen to a podcast, not listen to any music, and do that deep breathing. Please keep your eyes open if you're walking. Uh, and yeah, just be mindful of your surroundings. That's, that's another way to meditate. And another tip, which may seem counterintuitive, is to go to events solo. Because if you go with your friend, people say, oh, go it for moral support. Go with your BFF. And it's like, wait, who are you going to talk to the whole time if you're with your friend? So no, don't bring them. Say, I'll hang out with you later. Still want to keep our friendship going. But um, yeah, you're more likely to make new connections and make new friends if you attend more things solo. OK, who here has heard of Amy Cuddy? The TED Talk, power poses, yes. OK, I see a few hands. So um, let's see. So Amy Cuddy uh, has a TED Talk in which she discusses the power of posing. So she conducted this study where uh, 50% of people would be in a very expansive pose, like very Wonder Woman-like. This is the most recent Wonder Woman. And another group would be a little bit more inverted and hunched over, and let's say maybe looking at their phones, something like that. Uh, and in an interview setting, those who were more physically expansive in the, the moments leading up to their interview actually were significantly more likely to uh, make it onto the next round and feel more confident about how they did. So right now, everyone, please get up for a moment. And it can be any pose you want. It can be classic hands on the hips. We're just going to take a moment to do something expansive that feels really good for a few moments. One, two, three. Woo, that feels good, doesn't it? I mean, you can stay like that if you want. Um, <laughs> so yeah, feel free to take a seat. Uh, but so now that you've made it to the event and um, you've done your power pose, you're ready to, to enter, uh, but where do you stand? That can be a real thing. And you're like, oh, maybe I'll stand near, I don't know, the restrooms. Everyone needs to eventually, I don't know, go to the bathroom uh, or, oh, the coat check. People like to drop off their coat. Or what about check-in? Everyone checks in. No, don't do that. Because if you go to those places, those are very transient places. Think about it. Most people do not want to linger in the bathroom. They're there for a very distinct purpose. Um, same thing with check-in and coat check. So better places to situate yourself in, in a room would be near the host if there is one, because they probably know everybody. And then another social zone would be, um, let's say, near the drinks, uh, near the food, just being centrally located. So this is from um, Vanessa Van Edwards, her book, Captivate. Um, she is a behavioral analyst, and I highly recommend her stuff. And this is from her, again, how to gracefully start a conversation. So questions um, that I'm asked often would be, so wait, I don't even know where to start. Or I say hi, and then my mind goes blank. And it's like, well, OK, so I would say, here are some um, tried and true ways to start a conversation, but just overview high level, uh, sometimes people like to start conversations with, oh, you know, isn't it horrible outside? It's rainy or uh, traffic or oh, this horrible thing happened in the world. You know, if you want more positive things in your life, I would advocate for not starting with shared experiences or shared 
sentiments of things you don't like and start with something like, what was the highlight of your day? Or what are you excited about? And then you invite more great positive things in, into your life and into your relationship. So. Then how do you keep a conversation going? So you've started this positive conversation um, and you're like, wait, we wanna keep this engaging. So this is from Marie Forleo. Who's, who's heard of Marie Forleo? I see two hands, that's cool. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you about her. So she is a business coach. She's a multi-passionate entrepreneur. Uh, she has a really great YouTube series, different um, tips and tricks for business owners or just entrepreneurs entrepreneurially minded people. And here are a few tips um, that she's come up with, extracted from one of her videos. And it's, so while you're talking with someone focusing on giving versus getting, right? So what you can give, um, redirecting that focus, being present. So how many times have you been talking with someone and then you see that they're kind of like looking over your shoulder? or you know, kind of scanning the room while you're talking. <laughs> it's like, wait, that's not so cool. So just maintaining laser focus, you know, blinking a little bit's good, but having some focus on the person in front of you <laughs> is nice. Listening more than you talk. Um, and yeah, not over committing. Sometimes people will say, oh, we need to do brunch, you know, if you have a great conversation. And I mean, brunch sounds great, doesn't it? But making sure that you don't overcommit or feel guilty by saying, oh, you know, I'll have to get back to you on that. Um, and then being honest. If, if you don't have time in your schedule, then just saying, you know, I, it's, a, it's swamped right now. Um, but yeah, let's exchange business cards or connect on LinkedIn and, and we'll see what can happen. Uh, and then taking action immediately. So let's say that you're having a great conversation about, about your favorite food blog and this great recipe for nice cream. Oh my gosh, if you know what nice cream is, it's banana ice cream. It's made out of bananas, it's so good. But anyway, so if someone is, if you're having that conversation and someone's asking about the recipe, don't say, it'll be tempting to say, oh yeah, I can send it to you later. Because, oh my goodness, what if you forget? What if something comes up? Just do it in real time. That's, that's the best way to make that connection um, in real time and make sure that you get them the information that you talked about. And then how to end a conversation. Um, here, just I, I won't go into too much depth, but yeah, basically um, waiting for a pause is always good. <laughs> and then from there, uh, yeah just kind of um, asking for the card or uh, introducing to someone else passing by. So now it's post-event. The event happened, let's say you made your one new friend, possibly two, you never know. Uh, what you'll wanna do is get something on the calendar within, um, you'll wanna follow up within 24 hours, again, to keep that information fresh and then get something on the calendar for within the next two weeks. Um, Studies do show that if you don't plan something for within two weeks, then it likely will not happen. And be specific in your ask. Instead of, hey, we should hang out, or oh, it would be nice to see you again. It's like, hold on, no, no. Um, give a time, date, and location that's super specific, and then they can always say, oh, that sounds great, but I would change this one aspect of it. All right, so that's it. <laughs> I, I hope you learned something about networking and introversion. Uh, so yeah. uh, to let me know, here's some contact information and thank you so much.